know we're, we, we're just getting, we're, we're in the cloud of worship, um, but let's just give, just stand and give Dr. Faith the biggest, most, where she feels embarrassed of so much. <laughs> Come on. Well, praise the Lord. Come on. Wow. So we honor you, Dr. Faith, and thank you for, for doing this and your leadership and, and all your years of plowing. And, and so as a generation, we honor you. Amen. Amen. So the culture of honor is, is something that I believe the Lord is releasing in our generation to understand the, the significance of honoring those who have gone before us and have plowed away and also on the front lines plowing with us. And there's just a, a supernatural grace to do the work of ministry, what God's called us to do when we operate in a genuine place of honor. And so, so that's my heart is to honor everyone. And so I honor, come on, Pastor, oh, Pastor Arnold. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, I, ah, amen. Well, I'm stoked. I'm so stoked being here today. And I have a word from the Lord. And so I'm excited to share with you guys. And and um, just thank God for for you guys for leading worship and leading us in, into the present. So guys are amazing. Amen. And you can just keep playing a little softer. So. Okay, sweet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just love the this, this sound. It just, I don't know, I flow better. So, <laughs> well, so I, I love what was released during worship um, of burning, of we are the burning ones of God and to arise and shine. And actually, that's the message I'm going to share uh, tonight is arise and shine. <laughs> and so I wanted, the theme is the urgency of the hour. And the title, I normally don't do titles, but I got a title for this one, Arise and Shine. Because I believe we're in an important time in history. So I just want to share my heart. And so you can just uh, join me in prayer. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in the spirit, God. I thank you, Lord, for the unity you're birthing in our hearts, God. I thank you, Lord, for fresh encounters with you in this place. Fresh encounters with you in this place, God. I thank you, Lord, for what has been released and what you're going to continue to release tonight. And so, Lord, we say we open up the gates and the doors of our hearts. We say, King of glory, come in. King of glory, come in. You can say that to yourselves as I'm praying this. King of glory, come in. Jesus, I pray, God, in this moment, that you just decrease me, God. Just hide me behind the cross, Jesus. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. So I, I lay my pride, I lay my dignity at the foot of the cross right now. I say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way, God. Wow, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ha, ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm stoked. Okay, so... I just want to share about the urgency of the hour. And this is what I felt the Lord was saying, um, that we're in a time to refocus and to re-examine the foundations because he wants to release a boldness in the body of Christ. And so uh, we are living in significant times as you watch the news and you see all the stuff that's going on in Israel and Iraq and in our nation and in St. Louis with the racial tension. And with all this stuff is happening, we have to believe and have to know within ourselves that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. When we're seeing all these things happening in the natural, how many will agree with that? Then we see uh, war and, and all this type of stuff and rumors of wars and all this type of tension in the land. That something is happening in the spirit realm. And so even though we see the spirit of, of activism and justice being released, even in our nation and St. Louis, and everybody's familiar with uh, what's going on, right? 
Okay. Uh, the, the racial tension in St. Louis and, and the issues in other countries. And so we see the spirit of, of justice and, and activism being released in the earth. And as I was riding here and I was praying, I heard the Lord say really loud. And uh, I heard this said before, but this, he, actually, he spoke it to me today. He said that the revolution will be greater than the rebellion. And so I believe what the Lord is, is saying is that yet we are seeing this stuff rage in the land where we are, just as an activism, that there is wells of spiritual revolution stirring in the earth room, and the foundation of the throne of God is being established. Uh, Psalms 89 and 4 says that the foundation of the throne of God is justice and righteousness. And I believe the Lord is releasing a justice and righteousness movement. Ah, come on. In the earth. Come on. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I actually left one of my book. Caleb, can you grab my book sack over there and just bring it to me? It's behind you, blue book sack. Um, so we often see war and uh, revival run side by side. Thanks, bro. This is Caleb. Everybody say, hey, Caleb. He's a wow revivalist. He was at Chowan University when revival broke out. He's a crazy wow prayer warrior. So, amen. So glad he's here. So we often see uh, war and revival, like, run hand in hand. And we see this through history, through the first great awakening with John Edwards and, and, and George Whitfield that paved the way to the American Revolution. The second great awakening with Charles Finney and all the tent revivals paved the way into the Civil War. And also during the Zuzu Street Revival in the early 1900s, we saw the great San Francisco earthquake that happened. And I want to read uh, something regarding this, just for us to get a better understanding of war and revival, crisis and harvest, running hand to hand, okay? Sweet. So this is an account from uh, this book here is called Digging the Wells of Revival by Lou Ingalls, amazing book. Um, and so this is an account from Frank Bartleman, who was a leader in the Azusa Street Revival. Azusa Street Revival was a revival that broke out in the early 1900s where the Holy Spirit just dropped and it birthed so many Pentecostal holiness denominations that we see today. Um, and so it was a significant meeting, but this is what he wrote. He said, I felt a deep conviction that the Lord was answering our prayers for revival in his own way. When thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Isaiah 26 and 9. A tremendous burden of prayer came upon me that the people might be indifferent to his voice. The San Francisco earthquake was surely the voice of God to the people on the Pacific coast. In the early Azusa days, both heaven and hell seemed to have come to town. <laughs> Men were at the breaking point. When man came within two or three blocks of the place, Azusa Street, they were seized with conviction. Wow. So there's one more account. This is an account from, from Lou Engel. In 1995, there was a revival move that happened in this place in California. I was just in uh, last month called, it's in Pasadena, it's called Ma Auditorium. But this is a little, this is more longer, but you guys... You guys are alive? Praise Jesus. Yeah, you're alive. Jesus is alive, so you're alive. Amen. <laughs> so, so in 1977, while going to seminary in Ashland, Ohio, I met a young man. Actually, this is the wrong one. Sorry. <laughs> this is good stuff. Okay, sweet. So on April the 29th, 1992, I watched with millions and other viewers as Los Angeles was, was scorched and shamed by the riots that followed the acquittal of the police officer charged in the beating of Rodney King. For eight years, he had labor crying out to God, Pasadena for God. For eight years, we had labored in the place of prayer crying out to God, Pasadena for God. I will never forget weeping and interceding before the television as I watched Regin Reginald Denny and others being beaten as whole city blocks blaze out of control. 
Where was the mighty revival our city had been promised? Two days later, our pastoral team joined with other concerned pastors from the Los Angeles area in the emergency prayer session. Jack Hayford led our time together. As we intercede for our city, a large African-American pastor stood and began to pour out his pain. As he prayed and cried out for Los Angeles, I look over to Cheyon, my senior pastor. He was weeping uncontrollably. uncontrollable. It, it seemed as if waves of brokenness was rolling over him. Che and I have been close friends for many years. In 1982, he received a dream from the Lord that has shaped his destiny and that, and that of many others. In an experience very similar to Paul, a large black man appeared before Che, motioning urgently towards him. He said, this is in the dream, come to Los Angeles. There's going to be a great harvest. Under the immediate... The, under the immediate of the presence of the Holy Spirit, Che awoke, trembling with a song in his spirit. Go forth, go forth into the reaper's field, for they are wide unto harvest. <laughs> the time, the time of weeping is at hand for the harvest of souls of men to be gathered in. What has sown in tears shall now be reaped with joy. In the power of the Spirit, revival begins. Two years later, with the blessing of other church leaders, Che began to form a ministry team to go west. Having grown up in Southern California, I sensed that God was also leading me to Los Angeles. In 1984, 12 of us left Maryland to plant a church in, a crown, in the crown city of Pasadena, just minutes away from downtown Los Angeles. As I watched Che weep at the meeting of intercession, intercession in 1992, I could only wonder what was going on in his heart. Later, Che told me excitedly, Lou, that black pastor who was praying was the same man I saw in my dream in 1982. After the meeting, I had gone to the man and asked, have you been praying long for Los Angeles? He replied that he had been interceding for Los Angeles since 1982. <laughs> the very year that I had my dream. I was stunned and shocked by Che words. I was also bursting with hope. Des despite the rumbling of the riots, God has given us a sign that his covenant promises would not fail and there is still hope for our city. I believe that the Lord still remembers another black man who prayed for revival in Los Angeles decades ago. His name was William Seymour. Whoa. So in the midst of crisis in Los Angeles, in the midst of crisis, and here you have these, these, these faithful intercessors who have been interceding. God saved Pasadena. God saved Pasadena. And yet in the midst of their deep crying for intercession, it seems like stuff was getting worse. Anybody ever been in a situation where you're praying for stuff, you're praying for a level of breakthrough in your life, but more you pray, it seems like, more the gate of hell is open and just pouring out just demons everywhere you know it's like boom 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 you know like whoa do i need to stop praying or what you know <laughs> they kept praying lord save pasadena well i pray that be a cry in our heart for our cities for our campuses for our, for wherever we are we are placed in our churches i want you to say i have an inheritance and so inheritance means a lot. We have joy, we have peace, all that spiritual inheritance. But also, inheritance also is wherever we are planted. Wherever you are planted, you have delegated authority in. Where are you planted? You're planted in a household. You're planted in a family. That means you have de delegated authority over your family. That means your family is your inheritance. Where are you planted? You're planted on a campus, a school, a high school, a middle school, a college campus. It's because you're there, that place is your inheritance. Come on. And God is faithful. And so here we see these faithful intercessors praying for what God is giving them an inheritance. And they say, God, save my city. Save Pasadena. Ah, I pray that, that a passion will burn in our hearts for where we are planted. Lord, save my family. Lord, save my school. Lord, save my church. Ah, come on. Ah. So in the part of this, this, this focusing on the foundation, I'm skipping around, but I'm sorry. Focusing on the foundation, one of the things is focusing on our inheritance, looking, 
practically sitting down, writing down, what is my heritage? Where am I planted? Come on. And so we see war and revival. Oh, jubilee and judgment running side by side. And we see it through scripture. But the Lord is faithful to his promises. Amen. Sweet. And so I feel that the next two years is going to be critical years in our nation, in the body of Christ, in our own individual lives. And I believe there's a decision that we have to make that we're willing to, to stand for righteousness. Everybody say, stand for righteousness. Stand for righteousness. We've been praying, we've been prophesying it during worship, that we are the burning ones, that we are consumed by the fire of God. You know what you're saying? You're saying, I'm dying to myself. I'm burning with the light of God. And I'm willing to stand for righteousness in the midst of darkness and calamity. I'm willing to stand for righteousness. Ah, come on. Whoa, praise the Lord. And so I feel the next two years are going to be critical. And I believe there's some really, like, fundamental things that, that we have to examine and just to prepare for both, prepare for the crisis and the revival. And, and, and one of the things, I'm, I'm connected with so many streams in the body of Christ and so many movements and a lot of youth movements. And, and, and one of the things I see in our generation is just not an understanding of the crisis. <laughs> we have an understanding of the harvest and the revival, but not an understanding of the yeah. crisis. And so yeah. I just want to release that yeah. over all of us today that, that we are living in like a time of urgency. And with that... Uh, is crisis, but also responding because we are also the answer. That's what I'm going to preach about tonight. But so I just want to share a little of um, of just what I feel called to the body of Christ to do because I believe it's going to just provide context for the rest I'm going to share. Uh, right now, one of my two main focuses, number one, is is to raise up revivalist reformers in our generation. Everybody say revivalist reformers. Come away. Now, let's say it like you are a revivalist reformer. Okay. Revivalists. Revivalists. Reformer. Reformers. <laughs> Come on. I believe the Lord is raising up revivalist reformers in this hour. And I'm going to preach from that. The passage I'm coming from is Isaiah 60. But the Lord is raising up revivalists and reformers. Revivalists who burn with the passions and the emotions of Jesus. Ah, whoa. That will burn with the passions in the motions of Jesus. Well, <laughs> who awakened the bride of Christ out of sleep and called them into a greater place of intimacy with the Father in an apostolic expression of missions to where they are planted and, and where God is sending them. Someone say, I am a revivalist. Come on, reviving the body of Christ calling the bride of Christ to come alive again. Well, second, I believe, Lord, my, my heart is, 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 is to raise up reformers. And I believe, Lord, is raising up reformers in our hour. Reformers, those who carry the cultures of the kingdom of God in their social spirits, those who will stand for righteousness and justice like Daniel and Esther. And the second thing I'm called to is to mobilize and fuel a national youth movement in America. <laughs> <laughs> come on so I feel we're all called to this yeah. and so you know I many of you guys that know me I'm a, a university revivalist missionary whatever you want to call it but my heart burns for university but it have not always burned for university even I was a university student it was something the Lord really just pushed me into really I didn't ask for university campuses and so one day I was asking the Lord recently, maybe about a week or so ago, I was like, Lord, why do you give me university campuses? Why do you give me college campuses? I never asked for that. You know, I was just curious, you know, like, why do you, why, I mean, I never prayed, Lord. I mean, from, from high school, every year in high school, during the summer, I would go to a week camp, a week camp on a campus in North Carolina. I had no prophetic inclination in my spirit at all. I'd be doing anything with campuses, you know? You know, sometimes you're walking, you're like, yeah, I always knew I was going to do revival on campuses. You know, those summers when I went to camp, I just felt, when I stepped on NC State campus, I just felt the glory, you know? I knew something. I had none of that at all. And so I'm like, okay, God, I never asked for university uh, universities or campuses. And the Lord said, Nico, you did ask for it. 
when you ask for revival. <laughs> I was like, now that I did ask for. <laughs> and so what well, that really like birth in my heart is, is that that university campus is also high school campuses are key to seeing revival releasing the earth. And so I do remember asking for revival. And so, <laughs> and so anyway, so my heart is to mobilize and to feel a national uh, youth movement, youth revival, youth harvest movement in America. And the Lord is already doing it. Like, and, you know, and we all just play small pieces in it, you know. And so, uh, and we're, we're seeing all across America. And I can, I can just actually just put a pin there. Well, I can just, just preach there and just, and we can all go home, but I'm not. But the Lord is moving across America. Where it used to be burning ones burning in their campuses, in their cities, not connected with other burning ones. In this movement of God today, the Lord is connecting the burning ones. It's wild. Like, it's crazy of how many people from different states who are plowing, plowing, whether it's, it's campuses or cities and churches, that the Lord is supernaturally connecting. Many of you are familiar of, of the plowman movement, and, and that's the whole heartbeat of the plowman movement, of connecting movements that's stirring because there's there's actually there's movements everywhere in the earth but movements really don't become recognized as movements until it's unified it's almost like everybody's doing their own thing but have the doing the same thing but their own thing in their own place and then they all come together and then someone shoot a, a sweet video and it's like oh my god there's a movement happening in the carolinas <laughs> And so that's our heart, to see a unified student army movement in America. And so, of course, there's other things the Lord is doing to see revival. But I believe these are my pieces that I, I really, my heart burns for. And I believe there's a calling for many of you in the same uh, to burn. And so I, I believe as I was talking about looking at foundations, and I, I believe the Lord is saying even looking with, as I said, our inheritance, but also our alignment in the body of Christ. Everybody say alignment in the body of Christ. Like how we are aligned and where we are. Does that make sense? Come on. Okay, and so, and so we can turn to uh, Isaiah 60. Actually, Isaiah 59, 21st verse. One of the things I love preaching is, is, is the apostolic expression of who we are apostolic expression of who we are, what God called us to do. And so, um, and this is, is, is what I'm going to minister on from this passage here. Is everybody's there. If you're there, say amen. <laughs> Washington, North Carolina Baptist. <laughs> Sweet. So, Isaiah 59, 21st verse. And as for me, this is my covenant. Everybody say covenant. With them, says the Lord, my spirit is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, saith the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Everybody say forevermore. You know what forever means in the uh, Hebrew? It means forever. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, so the covenant of the Lord will be in your mouth forever, in your children's and your offspring's mouth forever. The promises that the Lord has spoken over you, the promises the Lord has spoken over your city, over your campus. And, and there are some promises where, I mean, uh, that that you can just take hold of and grab it for yourself, you know? Well, no one personally prophesied over me. Well, well, grab it and take it. If it's over your city and you're in your city, it's for you. Take it just like the Lord gave it to you. Come on. And so the Lord said he'll be faithful to his promises. Everybody say faithful to his promises. Okay, let's shout it. Faithful to his promises. Faithful to his promises, 
Amen. Isaiah 6, it says, arise. Everybody say, arise. Arise. That means get up. <laughs> that means you're either sitting down or laying down. And it says, arise and shine. Everybody say, shine. shine. Everybody say, shine. shine. Ah, there's a glory waiting for your arising. Come on. Whoa. The shining happens once we arise. <laughs> So good, okay. <laughs> for your light has come. For your light has come. Whoa, who is the light? Jesus is the light. Ah, arise and shine. Get up. For Jesus has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. And thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Come on. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of calamity, in the midst of intense like war in the earth, in the earth and, and even on the people, God is saying, arise and burn bright. Oh, I can just take off running right now. Whoa. <laughs> and I feel that the Lord wants to release boldness yeah, yeah. for what he's calling us to do. Yeah. Mm. Oh, praise the Lord. So I feel the rise in the, as, as we're, the call into a rise to shift from positions. So wherever we are now, the Lord's saying shift position. Shift where you've, where you've been in the old place and move to a new place for there's a glory waiting for you. It's waiting for your arising. Not only is the glory waiting for your arising, but kings and nations is waiting for your arising. As revivalists and reformers in the earth, we are answers to many of the problems today. Do you see this in this passage? It says you are the answer because kings and nations will come to your arising in the time of immense darkness. Say, I am, the answer. I am the answer. I was born for such a time as this. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and let's give God a shout for that. Yeah. Do you really believe it? Do you really believe that you were born for such a time as this? Okay, let's close our eyes right now. Let's just receive it. God, we believe, God, that we were born for such a time as this, Lord, in a time of darkness, God, that your glory is arising in us. Ah, whoa. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whoa. Ah, let's just soak in that for a couple of seconds, that you were born for a time such as this. Ah, Whoa. Praise the Lord. Ah, you were born for such a time as this. Nations and kings are waiting for your arising. Ah, I didn't say that. It's right here. Isaiah 63. And nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your arising. There's a rising of an army in the earth of burning ones, an army of revivalists, reformers, and guess what? You're in. Yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. And so I feel that the Lord wants to release boldness. Everybody say boldness. <laughs> boldness. As we see um, what's happening in the earth now we're seeing the boldness arising and many people like activism is, is a is an action of boldness when you see people begin to rally and, and to protest it's an actness of boldness ah, somebody say immense darkness ah, immense darkness and what is the father response to immense darkness arise and shine <laughs> so we want to just release the spirit of boldness we believe that uh, we've been preaching 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 a lot about uh, preparing for the harvest preparing for the harvest 
is a, is a passage in Isaiah. It says, the plowman plow just to continue to plow. Isn't like if a plowman is plowing, eventually, like if you keep plowing in the same place, the ground is going to be plowed. But because he's a plowman, he just keep plowing? No. He begins to start sowing seeds in the grounds that he, he plowed. And it's the same thing. I just want to release this quickly before we, we go into just prayer and release the spirit of boldness. Uh, Amos 9, it talks about, uh, it's an amazing scripture about the time we're in. And, and, and I'm not going to actually read it. I'll just paraphrase it. It talks about the restoration of the tabernacle of David where we're seeing an unprecedented movement of prayer in the earth like any other time in history. And it also talks about it will come a time where the plowman will overtake the reaper. Other words, it's going to, it comes a time where there's going to be a spirit of, of acceleration. Where it's going to be almost like the time is taken out of the equation where it was seed, time, and harvest. You know, you, do, you plant you plant a seed, you wait for a time for it to grow, and then you see the harvest. But this passage is saying it's going to come a time where it's going to be a speed and acceleration. Where it's almost going to be as time is taken out of the equation, it will be seed, harvest, seed, harvest, seed, harvest. And so we have been preaching... We have been preaching uh, that, that we're getting ready for a harvest. And I believe actually we, this, this summer was in between waves of harvest. And Lord was doing a lot of inner healing in our hearts and a lot of stuff and, and getting us ready for the outpouring of his spirit. Yeah. And so, you know, so I've been actually preaching that all summer that, that we're in between waves. And the Lord is preparing us for the harvest yeah. for this fall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I believe God operates on the college calendar because I'm a campus missionary. <laughs> And so school is back in. And so that means the fish is, is coming. <laughs> and so now is the time for harvest. Come on. <laughs> and so, so I'm not going to say that the Lord is preparing us for harvest because now the harvest is, is here. Well, I just want to jump right now. I'll just do it. <laughs> Because the harvest is here, and so what do the Lord? What did the Lord did uh, in, in Acts two when when the harvest was was right and the time was come the time of Pentecost? The Spirit of the Lord fell, and they were filled with His Spirit, right? And they were moved in the fire of God, and they began to move in boldness. Persecution hit the church. Fear begins to attach itself to the to the people of God, and what did they do? They went back and they prayed. They went back to the upper room. And they say, Lord, we were, we were moving on wild zeal and passion. But now we're in between waves. We need boldness because persecution has hit us. Someone say, I need boldness. And so they went back to the upper room when persecution hit the church. They went back to the upper room. And they say, Lord, fill us again. We need boldness because of the time that we're in. And the earth shook again. And the Lord filled them with boldness. And they went and they preached the gospel. The harvest is right. The harvest is now. Jesus, fill us with boldness. Yeah. So that's what we're really going to release tonight. Just a quick, just impartation. Just boldness. So I, I just encourage you guys, just, just, I just want you just to open your heart now. <clears throat> at the arising <clears throat> I believe it's difficult for many to arise sometimes because there's a commitment that comes to arising and shining yeah. there's a commitment that, come, that comes with saying God I'm going to burn for you yeah. and that commitment is saying I'm willing to die for you A lot of people is willing to live for Jesus, but not a lot of people is willing to die for Jesus. Yeah. So the call 
to the church, to the body of Christ to arise is a call to die. Yes. Yeah. For it's only when we die to ourselves that the fullness of the glory of God can shine upon us. So Jesus, prepare our hearts. Let's just lift our voices to God right now. Let's cry out before the Lord. all to you God we want to lay our pride and our dignity at your feet God oh God we lay it all down before you God not about us. It's all about you. We don't care about the opinions of others. Just the opinions of the Father. We only want to do, God, what we see you do, God. want to release if uh, I just want to do an altar call for those who are coming into a harvest and faith you those who are coming into a harvest where it's a campus whatever we all are yeah. whoever is called to a harvest we're just going to invite you to, to come up and
also felt um, this call for the reformers and revivalists, and it's, it's similar to what he's saying, but some of you guys, you feel like from the time you were young, you just knew you were different, and there's something on you. You see things differently, and um, you understand the world differently, and when we talk about reformers and revivalists, we're not just talking about in church, but you might be a musician, or you might be a medical doctor, you might be um, in the arts. The Lord's raising up reformers in every sphere of influence. So if you always felt like, and I coach people for a living, and I get people to say, I always felt like I was supposed to do something big. Or I felt like I was supposed to change the world. Like if you have that cut, where are you going? Come on, sir. <laughs> yeah, we want, we want to pray for you. And tonight, God's going to mark some people. I've been in some of these meetings uh, with Lou Ingo and all those guys where we, the presence of God comes. And sometimes it was not with people that we know. But there are moments in time that are divine destiny. Where God literally marks you and he downloads a burden on your life. And the other day the Lord was telling me that everybody's fighting a cause these days. If we fight a cause without Jesus, it just becomes a burden that will kill us. But there's a heavenly burden that God wants to release in this hour. And so some of you, yeah. God's going to really begin. Even now your heart feels like it's going to burst. He's going to begin to burden you. Come on up. Come on up or kneel at your seat, whatever. But we'll lay hands quickly. You can kneel. You can stand. Robo shakarabashe tarabasha Rebeka shaka tarabashe Robo korobo shaka tarabasha Rebeka tarabashe kata Robo shoto robo shab We thank you for heavenly burdens tonight We thank you for the burden of heaven That does not break us We thank you for the yokes that are easy and light God we thank you That in this moment you're marking us God In this moment you're releasing What we were made for in this moment you're releasing clarity about what we're called to do what we're where we're gonna go and the people that we're called to touch god i thank you that we're not a generation that wanders around the desert but you've called us as a generation who will know their god and will do great exploits and so in this very moment we ask for the fire of god to come in this place we ask for the fire of God to come in this place. We ask God for your holy fire to begin to saturate every single person that's seated in this place, God. We ask God for holy boldness in the name of Jesus. We will not look at the faces of men, but we will look to you, God. Robo shakata shata. Mark us tonight, God. Mark us, God. Mark us, God. Give us clarity about our future. Give us hope about our future. In this hour, in this moment, you're raising us up to rise and shine. Sharabasha katasha. Robo shatarabashe. Oh, Marcus God. Marcus God. Sharabakanda rabasho tosho. Rebesho korobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobobob